Hey, what's up everybody? True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get hit with the truth. So today we are doing the ESPN July 6th recap that was headlined by Shakur Stevenson and um, Artem uh, Hartunian for the WBC lightweight title. We're going to get into the big three fights on that card. Before we get into that, if you could smash the like button, leave a comment, or subscribe to the channel, I really do appreciate any and all support that I can get as I continue to build my channel here. So, um, we're going to kick it off with the undercard that, you know, it was on the main card. We started with the Keyshawn Davis and Miguel McDueno, uh lightweight showdown, kind of had some uh, injury. It was a you know foul fest in injury. Uh, uh, you know people almost getting injured. Um, Madueno just couldn't handle that. Uh, Keyshawn Davis was just hitting them over and over. So he uh, was hitting on the break. Actually, actually hit the referee and knocked him down. Um, was picking you know picked up Davis. It was. A lot going on, and the ref still didn't take any points from Madueno. Not that it mattered. It's just, you know, you got to take points to threaten disqualification for a guy to stop his bullshit. Um, but Keyshawn Davis just dominated Madueno uh, over 10 rounds. Um, clean uh, decision win here. Davis just uh, on point with his accuracy and stuff. Willing to take risk and get in there in the pocket and land uh, counter shots. Um, so Keyshawn Davis, strong performance. Um, we'll see what he does in his next fight. Um, hopefully, uh, you know we get we hear something soon about what he's going to do. I don't really do. Uh, I'm not going to do a what's next on Davis. I don't. I don't think he's quite a top ten fighter yet. But we'll see what goes on. Um, the co feature saw Oshaki Foster and Robson Concisal for the WBC Super Featherweight title. Now, we got to talk about this fight. A lot of uh, a lot of opinions going around um, about this fight. You know, I, it wasn't a an entertaining fight. I was really looking forward to it, and I thought it was going to be much, much better. Um, Oshaki Foster, instead of engaging with Concisal, decided to uh, have a defensive um, day and um, box. And, you know, he said it. He said he's kind of a shapeshifter. He switches his styles around based on his opponents. And, um, you know, you really saw that in this fight. He has he counterpunched um, somewhat um, and played defense. But um, it, it wasn't enough. The, you know, because I think he was out, he outlanded um, Concisal by about, you know, 45, 50 punches. But I think the biggest key here was, um, well, that Concisal out threw him by about 200 punches, close to that. Now, um, they went to the scorecards, and Concisal took a very controversial um, split decision in this one. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's probably my front runner for most controversial fight of the year. I'm going to tell you that right now, I believe Oshaki Foster won the fight. Um, I, I've been confirming, you know, with some guys that that uh, look at fights the way I look at fights in terms of the scoring. And I think 8-4 to four is a fair score for Oshaki Foster. Um, but he wasn't doing a lot in those rounds, you know? Um, and when, you know, so for instance, he would stand back and play defense and make Concisal miss a lot. But he wasn't attacking, you know? Um, he was throwing some counter shots, but they were mostly ones and twos, um, jabs, which, hey, I'm not never going to knock a jab, but it, he, his offense just wasn't consistent. You know, and he had the opportunity to land good shots, but instead he would stay out of harm's way. And it was interesting because he had so many opportunities to throw counter shots. And I really started looking at it going, okay, because he was out landing uh, Concisal. Um, I think Concisal landed uh, in the area of about um, uh, probably 
seven or eight punches around, right? And uh, what's his name? Foster was landing around 10 to 11 punches around. If he would have thrown 10 more punches every round, and let's say he misses half but lands half, right? He probably, he, he doubles on the landed shots then. Um, and, and it's more of, I think he wins that fight more decisively. I really do. And, um, or he wins the fight period because he would have been more decisive. You have to understand that a lot of judges these days, well, and maybe people in general are looking at fights based on who's coming forward, right? That's always going to be given more love than if you stand back and box. Now, it's not a flat black or white thing. It's not a one way or the other. You got some guys that stand back and box and some judges give them credit for standing back and boxing and landing punches. But that's the thing is Foster wasn't landing punches. Tim Bradley said at the beginning, you know, all oh, people might not like this style very much, but Floyd Mayweather did it all the time. Okay, I'm not disputing that, but Floyd outlanded his opponents by clear long shots. It wasn't even close for the most part, you know, and Floyd um, would counterpunch more, you know, than, than Foster. You know, he was counterpunching a lot, and, and that's the thing is, you know, you can't just go out there and play defense when a guy is just coming at you continuously and out and out throws you by 200 punches and expect that it's a landslide decision you know again i thought he won the fight i'm not disputing that i'm not going to sit here and argue with anybody that he didn't win i'm saying it wasn't a shutout like bradley was saying it wasn't that you know and part of it's because he wasn't throwing enough and even Bradley said uh, in the middle towards later of the fight, he said it a couple times, he said he needs to throw punches for entertainment value. Well, well, yeah, entertainment value scores points. You know, you gotta be flashier. You gotta come out and score points. And, you know, Oshaki Foster, I don't wanna say he beat himself because I think he won the fight. But I understand why this fight was closer than people thought it was. Now, eight to four for him was fair. Eight to four for Conceição. I'm sorry, I, I can't see Conceição winning eight rounds. No way. Just, I mean, no way. Um, seven to five, I get, I don't know. It, I, I don't think Conceição won the fight. So I can't sit here and say that I thought he won enough rounds to win a fight. But again, you know, some judges and especially Guys, I've been saying this for a long time. When you're sitting on one side of the ring, you miss a lot of stuff, you know? And that's why I feel like um, like uh, judges should be sequestered. That way they're not influenced by the crowd. They're not influenced by, um, you know, the commentators that don't sit very far away from some of them. And they get to watch the fight on a TV monitor, you know? and. That's it, not with the announcers talking. You can have the crowd in the background, but on a TV monitor, the crowd is not as if you were sitting there live. You know, it's very different. So um, I believe that Foster should have won this fight for sure, but I'm, I'm really not surprised at how the decision went, you know? Um, so it's tough it's going to be interesting to see how the wbc handles this if they order an automatic rematch or if they let the winner go forward um and fight some you know fight like maybe the winner of navarate and valdez too um we'll see but um a tough performance and a disappointing one because i really thought this was going to be a much better fight but in all fairness to conciso i i do not like when a guy doesn't deserve a victory but let's be fair. Conciso should have got the decision over Oscar Valdez um, back in 2021. Um, I felt like he did more and won more rounds than Navarrete last year um, for the WBO title. So things have a way sometimes of evening themselves out. And I think Conciso, you know, 
at least he gets to call himself a world champion, although it happened with controversial circumstances. But we should have never been in this position, at least not like this, to where he was making a fourth attempt at a world title because he, in all fairness, he should have probably got the nod in one of those two fights, especially the Valdez fight. So that's 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 my opinion on that. Now we get to the main event, Shakur Stevenson and Artem uh, Hartunian. You know, Stevenson outboxed, outclassed Hart Hartunian. I'm not going to dispute that. But damn it, this guy does not put his foot on the gas pedal and and it's 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 frustrating because I I thought his mentality was different and when the when you heard the um, the commentator say that they interviewed Shakur and Shakur said he doesn't care about the fans, that's when I knew this guy's not going to change his style. He's going to, uh, and it's not that he has to change his style. He just needs to, it, if you want that entertainment value, if you want to max out how much you should be getting paid, you got to take risks. And I, and I can't stand this comparison to Mayweather. Because Mayweather, and, I, and somebody uh, on one of the um, the group, the boxing fans group pages I follow, finally hit it on the head this morning. I'm reading, and he said that he he's answering his own question. He said, I don't understand, and I think that was more of a public statement. And then he said, well, the reason is, is because Mayweather, uh, Pretty Boy Floyd, and Money were two different Mayweathers. Um, Pretty Boy Floyd was an attacker. He was aggressive. Um, he was a boxer puncher for sure, but he would attack his opponents and he was knocking out most of them. Um, Money Mayweather, when he stepped it up, uh, primarily the De La Hoya era on, right? The, the latter half of his career. He adapted more of a defensive style, but it was for a couple reasons that I think are somewhat legitimate. First, he's moving up in weight, fighting bigger guys, okay? And naturally, you slow down as you get older. So Mayweather knows all these things, so that's one. The second one is Mayweather had hand, in hand injuries, um, which, you know, I, I do buy some, uh, some credentials in that. But um, Mayweather built his name on attacking and being aggressive and knocking people out. And once he was in the, the Money Mayweather era, starting it against De La Hoya, he already had established himself as a, a big, as a money-making guy. You know, a guy that you could make money against. A guy that people wanted to fight. He was already pound for pound number one when he fought Oscar. He was um, a multiple division world champion and been in big fights. Um, even the fight that we all thought he lost against Jose Luis Castillo, he rematched Castillo and beat him. You know, that counts. That matters. He had already established himself by knocking motherfuckers out. Shakur Stevenson has not yet done that. So he cannot afford to stand there and, not, and just box and not take risks. He's not there yet. He's got to attack opponents be aggressive. I felt like when he fought, um, I, God, what is that guy's name? Um, um, Jamal Harry and Oscar Valdez in back-to-back -back fights, he attacked his opponents. Even though the Valdez fight was a decision, Valdez has got a great fucking chin. Even though it went to a decision, he was attacking Valdez. He was standing in the pocket, outlanding him, outgunning him, taking risks. You have to do that for entertainment value. So people want to watch you fight. Why do people want to watch Vasily Lomachenko fight? Because he's got a name, but he also attacks his opponents. And I'm tired of these boxers and some of their fans not understanding that. Do you want to be like Mayweather? You got to do what Mayweather did then. And then you can get to the second half of the career. And that's the thing. Mayweather was, was ridiculed for his style in that, that latter half. And I ridicule him a little bit. I understand the hand issues. I understand these guys are bigger. You don't want to take as many risks. But there were certain fights 
that I felt like he had such a good chin and he was so defensively sound that he could have won those fights if he would have attacked more. You know, or he could have won those fights by knockout. I'm sorry, he won those fights anyway, but he could have won them by knockout and really shut up a lot of the credits. Juan Manuel Marquez is one. Um, Miguel Cotto, he, if he would have attacked Cotto more instead of just standing there playing defense and counterpunching, I think he knocks Cotto out because he definitely hurt him in the 12th round. And I also think he knocks Manny Pacquiao out if he attacks him more and doesn't play such defense. But he got criticized for that and whatever, but he was already an established huge name that no matter what, it was going to be a big money fight. So, you know, that's the thing is people need to respect that. So, Stevenson, uh, underwhelming but convincing, dominant, unanimous decision win, retains his WBC lightweight title. Um, we'll see. We're going to do his what's next next week and see what he does. Um, Artem uh, Hartunian gave a good account of himself. He's a solid lightweight. He landed some shots. Definitely a skilled fighter. And I'm looking forward to seeing him come back and, and see what he can do because he might be able to be an effective fighter at lightweight and, and have some success. So um, I, he's not going to get a What's Next video next week, though. For sure, Shakur Stevenson, Foster Concisal will be getting What's Next videos. And that's it. That's what I got. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash the like button, leave a comment, or subscribe to the channel. This is True Boxing. You've been here with the truth.